Not since the E60 have I seen such an awkward, ugly and downright weird looking 5 Series. There is so much going on here. Is it a Toyota Camry? An E-Class? The aftermath of a car accident? And what's with this brick shoved right in the middle? It's like the designers were not consulted about the need to include provisions for safety sensors. BMW designs these days are definitely trying too hard to stand out, in my opinion. And it's a shame this movement has reached the 5 Series. Always such a refined, elegant and peaceful design package. But who knows, like the E60, maybe this design gets better with age. Regardless of all that, this is the new model. It's available as a fully electric package as well, called the i5. And what we have here is the Epic M Performance model, called the i5 M60, which essentially replaces the awesome M550i twin turbo V8. You'd have to agree, these rims look pretty cool. The attention to detail is stunning, with special M badges hidden on one of the spokes. They wear 245 40s on the front and 275 35s on the back. Inside, this is much more like it. It's calm yet sophisticated, unlike the exterior. However, the huge screen that runs across the dash looks a bit out of place in my opinion, and it actually looks a bit cheap, like they couldn't be bothered doing actual design work. Don't worry about drawing the dash, we'll just replace it with a big screen. All fixtures and fittings definitely ooze quality and prestige, from the crystal media controller and gear selector, to the carbon fiber trimmings and the finely stitched leather. There is no doubt this is a proper luxury vehicle. It's big as well, easily supporting four full-size adults. And the driving position is spot on. Rear passengers get their own mini touchscreen for climate controls, with more attention to detail in the perforated leather seats and exquisite metal speaker grills. This is fine motoring for modern times. The huge sunroof lets in a heap of light, making it feel really spacious and airy, but you can close it as well, and it's a proper shade cover. Up at the back, the boot measures in at 490 litres, which is not that impressive. Electrical stuff relating to the batteries in the rear e-motor must take up some room. The old M550i, for example, offered 530 litres. There is some extra storage under the floor, a great spot for the charging cables. Under the bonnet you'll find a massive plastic cover, but under that is the front e-motor, as well as components for the steering and adaptive sports suspension. With a whopping 442 kilowatts on tap, this thing hammers along. But surprisingly, it's no quicker than the old M550i V8. This is what it goes like. Out on the road, one of the first things you'll probably notice is the suspension. It is very, very nice. It's absorbing this pretty ordinary road beautifully, and yet it remains very flat and stable like a traditional BMW. It's not bouncing around, it's not doesn't feel floppy, it just absorbs the bumps, but then still provides a good sporty feel. The other thing you'll notice is the response from this powertrain. Now EVs are usually, or typically, very responsive anyway. You've got instant power. But the throttle, the actual pedal down there, is calibrated differently in every vehicle. In this though, it feels like a very high-end sports car, in that you only need to move the throttle just a little bit to cause a pretty big reaction. I've just got it in the normal mode as well, it's just in the default setting, I don't have it in sport mode or anything yet, but it feels extremely responsive. You can probably hear the artificial sounds coming through the speakers. I'm not a huge fan at all. Um, it does provide some form of uh, reference point or some sort of, yeah, you get more of a sensation that you're building speed, but fortunately you can just turn it off as well. It's called Iconic Sounds. And then it's just silent, but you still have the same G-force and acceleration. I'll leave it on for the purposes of this video just so you can tell when I'm hitting the uh, the throttle and when I'm not. So the handling is, is really good. It feels, as I said, very flat and it's very dynamic in that it's able to handle the bumps and things at the same time as providing good g-force around the corners. The only thing I don't quite think is right is the steering. It's just a little bit too touchy and 
fairly linear. It's on, a, on BMWs in the past, you know, you'd have this nice progressive feel, whereas this is, as soon as you move it, it kind of just turns and it's it stays that at that rate, or it feels like it stays at that rate of responsiveness. So you just get used to it like all things. And yeah, traction out of the corner is absolutely immense. It really squats down the, the rear end and the front actually lifts up under power. I'll just show you again. Floor it. Yeah, like you, you can't help but you bang your head against the headrest. It's that, uh, that responsive be interesting to see what it will do 0 to 100 the official claim is 3.8 seconds I believe I think it'll easily hit that or have no problem hitting that it does feel very pleasant and very nice to drive it's very calm apart from the uh, the, the crazy response from the, the throttle it feels very calm and luxurious even though this is an M, M performance model it's not a full M model uh, M performance models in the sort of more recent past have been a bit softer in my opinion and they're a bit more suitable for for the roads which is good because it's going to suit a wider variety of, of people of, of, of buyers whereas yeah previous generation m models or even m performance type of models um, they're always pretty firm and pretty at the more sort of hardcore end rather than just a nice balance I think this this does strike a nice balance it definitely handles really well uh, for the typical buyer that's going to be interested in something like this I think it's it's more than enough I mean you could tie down the suspension a bit more and give it a bit more of a hardcore feel provide a bit more communication through the steering as well I guess but again this is not an M5 it's just a sporty version of the 5 series yeah, awesome grip coming out of that corner and it just pounces down the uh, down the straights it's insane the great thing is it is very versatile as well so it's got a lot of different driving modes you just hit the my mode button down here and you've got a number of selections including a custom mode that you can set up as well so if we put it into sport mode activate the sport traction control system the sound has changed as well the response doesn't actually feel that much different it still feels very immediate but yeah the suspension is definitely more tied down it's still not uh, I wouldn't call it bone jarring it's definitely still quite comfortable which is great especially for such a heavy vehicle you to tie it down it's usually results in pretty firm firm settings yeah the front end feels a bit sharper in this mode which is good that's what you'd expect from a sports mode still has excellent traction something like this you know you could sprint from one side of a uh, country road to the other and you just get to the end and think how can anything be quicker than that because it's just it's so dynamic that it just pounces between the corners, absorbs the bumps, and just keeps going. You know, it is electric, so you don't have the, uh, the, the nice engine sound of an inline six or a V8, like the old uh, M550i or something like that. So it's not as enjoyable, in my opinion, as, a, uh, as some of the past 5 Series models. I think it would be a lot quicker than any previous generation 5 Series petrol model, aside from the M5s, just because it is so dynamic. It's also quite effortless as well. You don't have to be pushing the absolute, you know, maximum out of it. Uh, to, to, sorry, you don't have to be pushing the absolute limits to achieve very, very rapid cross-country performance. I think I actually prefer it in the normal mode though to be honest the noise is a bit off-putting in, in my opinion I know you know some 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 of the modern drivers like the the fake sounds but that sounds a little bit nicer a bit more pleasant but just the the ride and the handling I think it's just fine in this absolute standard mode for a drive like this if you're taking it on the track or something like that obviously you want something that's the firmest setting possible but just if, if I was going for a nice Sunday drive, I'd just leave it in the standard mode, turn the iconic sounds off, and just have a very rapid but 
pleasant and you know feel, feel good drive experience all right we'll head out now and do the performance test and see what it goes like <laughs> 